Well, excited certainly um, to resume this series. Um, I know how much it means to our entire state and uh, Lobo fans, Aggie fans, and it's it's great certainly that we could uh, be back in this building and obviously return it to them. Um, I anticipate a sold out crowd, which is uh, a testament to what our team has done uh, on the court in the community, as well as uh, our athletic department um, working their butts off to market it and uh, promote it. And then obviously an amazing fan base. So uh, tough challenge, you know, it's a team with a whole brand new roster, uh, almost beat Louisville at Louisville, had that game won. Um, you know, so we know they're going to be uh, competing their butts off. Coach Hooten does a great job, and uh, we know certainly it means a lot. Have you ever coached against him before? No, I don't think so. Have you talked to your guys about it, especially the ones that were here? Um... Yeah, we spoke about kind of all the elements that, you know, obviously what happened last year had nothing to do with our program. Uh, but that was a, you know, you don't want to, diminish that event, right? I mean, that was a, you know, a, a, a big uh, tragedy. Um, I don't think it had anything to do with the rivalry, but uh, it certainly happened. So more getting our guys to just understand, like, the biggest flex, as the young people say today, is winning the game. Uh, that's it, you know, n- nothing else. Um, I don't think in the two games that I played, there were any incidents. I mean, I know there was them stomping on our logo. I was more uh, offended by our defense on the last play than I was by that. Uh, So I don't, our guys in the two years I've been here have been great. And uh, we certainly talked just about, okay, emotions are running high or whatever, but we're always going to act the way that we want our our players to act in every game. Since you brought up the stomping, they... It's also, I mean, I guess you talk to them about how one little thing can be perceived by others as something bigger because they said the stomping was kind of predicated by Jalen House kicking their logo and all that was... I don't care about any of it. I really don't. I think Chris Jans did a great job to motivate their guys. Have at it. Like, I'm not offended by either one. If Jalen House did a little, like, I, who cares? I don't care. Uh, none of that matters. Chris Jans did a great job of motivating his guys come in here and win we all it's a long season uh, and we got to find ways to motivate our guys I, I, I as I said before they beat us at the buzzer two years ago I was not offended by what they did got a lot of respect uh, for what coach Hooten's trying to do so all that stuff is social media Twitter replies but none of that matters to me just to go back to last year when it all happened I just I know you, you've reported a lot about what actually took place but behind the scenes what was it like for you with Time frame. When did you find out? When did the discussion start? Yeah, I got an early morning phone call from Eddie Nunez. That's never good. The, the, the ADs don't normally call at 5 a.m. to tell you how great you're doing. So um, when I heard it, obviously, you know, shock, I think, like everybody else. And, you know, I think whenever a crisis hits, the number one thing you try to do is gather the facts first uh, to see what exactly is happening and so on. So, um, we had shoot around around 12 ish. And I remember at the time excitement because we we're going to sell out the building. It hadn't been sold out in a long time. Um, and so that was, I thought a testament to our guys, not bringing Lobo basketball back, but certainly getting the fans back. Um, and then I thought, well, more and more I'm hearing about this. I'm not sure we're going to play the game. So, uh, I just told our guys, honestly, I said, guys, uh, this is what has happened. Still trying to gather a lot of facts. Um, let's have a good shoot around regardless of if we play the game or not. Uh, those decisions are uh, rightfully so out of my hands. Um, and they were great and mature about it, but um, certainly it was it was a, just a odd day. How are you health-wise? Yeah, a little bit of a cold, but I'm, I'm bouncing back pretty good. Uh, uh, everybody... Uh, Mash won't play, but everybody else will play. Uh, Donovan Dent uh, didn't do much yesterday. We, with The guys that played more than 25 minutes didn't do anything yesterday. Um, and then we put guys through individual instruction and some free throws and things like that. Um, so I anticipate, knock on wood, we have a good practice today that everybody but Mash will be available. Is Mash possibly a, a no-go next week? I don't, I don't know. I, I would assume tomorrow, and then we'll see. 
Yeah. He's not, you know, he's not practicing. So yeah, that's conceivable. Yeah, I think it's great. Um, I understand the decision that was made last year. I, I thought it was the right one. I respect it. Um, I thought there was just, it was too soon, especially the day, the next day to be playing a game. Um, so I totally understood it. I'm happy that it's happening. Um, it's great for our state. You know, I, I don't, I tell people all the time, I've lived in a lot of places. I don't think people quite understand how much the state of New Mexico loves college basketball. Um, so it's a great opportunity, yeah, for, for Lobo fans, obviously, in this building to pack it, uh, but for New Mexico to be kind of a, a story nationally um, because we do have, and New Mexico State's had great success in the past as well. They've got great tradition. Um, they're two great fan bases, um, and certainly it's, it's a, a great rivalry. So happy that it's uh, resuming. Well, I think they've all played in big games. Um, I never make one game bigger than the other. I, I just refuse to do that. Um, and our fans, although they, you know, like this game, I'm not one to say this game means more. And I hope our fans understand that the right way. Um, I coach every game like it's the most important game of my life. And I hope they approach that the same way. Um but I think more than anything, there's the element of a sold out crowd. There's the element of that rivalry. So you have to, you know, you, you got to just play the right way, um, regardless of where you're playing, who you're playing. So that's always been kind of my message, the way that I've coached. Uh, so hopefully on games like this, uh, it resonates even more. With, with, I mean, they're a rebuilding program right now because that's what they are. But regardless of that, it seems like rivalry games are always going to be close no matter what. You got called out Colorado State the other day. I mean, how do you coach a, a game like this where regardless of, you know, a, a talent level, it might be a little closer than you'd like? Oh, I, I, I coach them all the same. Um, my approach will be the same for this one as it was for Texas Southern, uh, UT Arlington. They all are important to me. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to do our very, very best to prepare them to go win the game. Um, we know New Mexico State, Coach Hooten, has been very, very successful for a long time. I got a lot of respect for him and the staff for what they're trying to do. Um, you know, so anything, you know, every every opportunity is a great one for us. So nothing changes on our end. I know you like when I ask you Ken Palm questions. So, mm -hmm. uh, I like Ken Palm. You guys are top 40 in the country in defensive efficiency. That's number two in the Mountain West. Are you guys the second best defensive team in the Mountain West for sure? I, I don't know the other teams uh, defensively. I, I I think we are improved. Um, the personnel has certainly changed. I think that has a lot to do with it. I think the shot blocking element that um, Nelly and JT bring. I don't. I, you'd have to figure that out. I, they got to be tops in the Mountain West after what seven eight games. However, everybody's played, but shot blocking has helped. Uh, increased length on the perimeter has helped. Um, and it just, a, an understanding of you, if you want to win, you got to defend, you got to rebound. Rebounding has been good. Um, so I don't know where we would rank amongst everybody, but I have really, really liked the defense the last couple of games. Good. Good. Yeah. He, uh, he didn't do much yesterday, but the guys that played 25 minutes, uh, or more did not. Um, so hopefully he'll feel better. He said he felt better yesterday. So hopefully another day. How, well, how did Jalen feel after his thirty plus minutes? He seemed good. Yeah, he was he was kind of a he was a guy we told not to do workouts and he did them anyway. So he he was bouncing around good. Um, are you a little surprised at how deep that you've been able to go into the you know, the roster and play as many guys as you've played? Uh, not really. No, I, I I'm still trying to figure out how to play Sebastian and. Isaac and Q more. Um, it's not personal. I tell them all the time, and it, it, nothing crushes me more as a coach when we're winning and I've got three or four guys that don't play. Um, I promise them it's not personal. Uh, they're all really good players. 
um, and I'm trying to find ways to get them all in, but you can't play 12, 13 guys. It's a uh, reality of it. But um, I think our staff has done a terrific job of recruiting in the two years that I've been here, and I think we've got a lot of uh, good pieces. Some of your staff and senior players had a pretty big high school game here last night. Can you just talk about how you've seen the game and just grow here locally from this week one? Um, I'm trying to say how how I don't get a violation of some sort. Um, I no, I think I could speak on it. I mean, I think the uh, whether it's uh, AAU high school coaches, we've been able to get over here. Whether it's through it's through a clinic um, that we did in the fall, um, you can. It always starts at the grassroots level, and you can tell uh, they love basketball. You know, and it's important to them. And so when you get really good coaching at the grassroots level, I have a son and daughter that are in it, and, and it's terrific. I mean, it's they're getting real coaching. And so it starts there, and it just continues to build. So um, we want to recruit locally as well as nationally. And if you're the best player in, you know, the state of New Mexico, we're going to recruit you hard. So uh, they're getting coached very, very well. And uh, as I've said many times, I know college basketball is important to this community, and you can tell um, when you when you go to these games locally. What does Jason and his team need to do? What are, what are the Aggies do defensively? I know they're man to man. Yeah, man to man. And, and they want to get physical, right? They want to be physical. They want to pressure. Um, they played obviously a very tough schedule. I mean, at Louisville, at Kentucky. Um, you know, I think as he builds his roster. Uh, you're going to see that, that identity of, I would assume he'll be all man-to-man, pressure, um, disrupt you. Uh, you know, I think that's certainly what his teams did at, at Sam Houston. And he's, he's, I mean, he's been very, very successful for a while. There's some similarities to what Jan's team has done, too, like in terms of rebounding. And some yeah, I think Jan's probably a little bit slower of a game, maybe. But um, other than that, I, I think it's some similarities. I don't think he worked for him. Did he? No, but but there are some certainly some similarities. What are they like? Uh, I don't know. Do you know yet if there's if Finley's playing as their guard? Or... He's playing. Yeah, he was playing. Oh. He played last game. He didn't play against the University of the Southwest two years. Or the one before, though, yeah, he, did he did. Yeah, yeah. So what are they like? I'm assuming playing, he's playing. Um, with him as opposed to before he Yeah, played? I mean, he's a bigger guard, right? So that's an interesting dynamic, and he could probably play the one, two, three, four. Um, you know, so you have to have some size on him. I don't know how tall he looks tall. Um, yeah, I mean, he is in person. Uh, so that's a unique dynamic that I don't think we've really seen in the non-conference. Um, they've got good talent, you know, they do. And he's obviously a high major guy, you know, they've got a lot of transfers like everybody else does. I had, uh, you know, my staff kind of give me the rundown of where everybody's from. And it's just funny how College basketball's evolved into that. Um, but I know Coach Hooten inherited, obviously, one of the more difficult situations, and he had to kind of hit reset and do that. Um, but they do have some good talent. I mean, they're right there with, with Louisville, right there. Um, and uh, he's going to get them to play really, really hard. Does the fact that they're basically an expansion team, does that kind of water down the rivalry? I know that when you get on the court, the fans are riled up about the uniforms the guys are wearing, but that's – that's a brand new team, brand new coaches. Well, their situation is extremely unique. Um, now, in today's world, when you fire a coach, almost everybody's going to start over all the time um, just because of the transfer portal. I mean, kids are they're looking for reasons to get a new, fresh start. And when you fire a coach, that's going to happen. Now, theirs was extreme. Um, so I don't. I don't, I don't know about watered down or any of that. I mean, I know that we're going to play a game here tomorrow and it's going to be most likely sold out. Uh, so I think that means it's a pretty good rivalry. Um, and I think Coach Hooten and his staff will, hopefully not tomorrow night, but they're going to they're gonna, uh, get this program uh, on the right track because he's, he's done it for a long time. Yeah, uh, I still remember, you know what I'm saying, uh, going to shoot around and – them telling us that we may or may not play that game. We kind of didn't know what was really going on at the time. And then Coach Pete told us there was a possibility, like a high possibility we wouldn't play, but we still kind of had hope. And then later on in the day, they were like, it's definitely that we're not playing. So we were bummed out for sure. I think that was our first sold out game. So we were excited to, you know what I'm saying, go out there and play in Flower Cod, but it is what it is. So we just had to keep on moving on, prepare for the next game. I, I mean, uh, I think it's safe to say you've probably never been through a situation quite like that, but I'll ask you. Okay. So that was <laughs> yeah, the first. Nah, that was for sure. That was definitely a first. Definitely a first.
So what do you think, uh, now that you are playing the game, um, it's really just about jerseys. None of those players were here last year. None of the coaches were here last yeah. year. Um, but they're wearing a jersey that means a lot when it comes into this place, just like your guys' jersey means a lot to them when it goes in there. So it's going to be a little bit heated. What do you uh, What do you know about this rivalry? Um, I mean, every every school I feel like has a big rivalry team, uh, you know what I'm saying, an opponent that they face that means a little bit more. But really for us, we're training us like another ordinary game. Every game we want to come respect to the other team, but – when you come in here, it's business. No matter who you are, we're not trying to get really caught up in the antics. We're just trying to come in, do our job, and focus on the game plan. Leave all the extra stuff, you know what I'm saying, outside the court. So. He was making people good. Every time he comes in here, he said, i got to find more minutes for Keith. <laughs> I mean, it, is that kind of your goal, is just to make, uh, make it a real difficult decision for him? Uh, I guess. I mean, my goal is to, like I told you guys last time, I'm going to do my job. That's play hard. Defending rebounds, so I appreciate uh, you know what I'm saying the things Coach P said to me and about me, but like I said, I'm really just focused on playing, really. So, what have you? How do you feel you've done things when you played? If that's if your goal is to do those things when you're on the court, how how close to to exactly how you want it to be in the minutes you're on the court? Have you <clears> have you gotten? Are you doing what you want to do out there? More or less. Uh, I said I'm never really satisfied, so I feel like I've done a decent job, an okay job. But in my head, I feel like I could still be doing a lot better. So definitely every day putting more work in and just ready for the opportunity when it comes. So you got to see a sellout crowd here last year, but this will be your first time actually playing what we're assuming will be a sellout crowd. How much are you looking forward to that and just being in that atmosphere? Uh, big time. I've been looking forward to it since last year. I feel like all of us, when we committed here, we were really uh, interested in the crowd and the fans and the love and support. So being able to be here last year and see a sold out crowd was was cool. It was lit, but now that I'm able to play in it, I'm excited. So you talk about treating this kind of like another game and approaching it like that, and that's what your coach also mentioned too. But knowing that there's a potential for sell out crowd, things like that, how do you kind of try to maintain your emotions when you head out to the court tomorrow? Um, it's definitely hard and it's easy to feel anxious, but me and even uh, Mash talked about it. Like times you feel anxious, that's just when you got to calm yourself in and just sit down and rest how blessed you are for every opportunity that you have. It's kind of just time to be appreciative. So we kind of just calm down and realize, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people in this crowd, but we play in front of people all the time. At the end of the day, it's just another game. It's just another opportunity for us to go out there, have fun, and show what we can do. So, you know, Defensively this season for the team, you guys have new personnel, but what is working that you guys are better on the defensive end? Um, we're applying a lot more pressure. We're trapping uh, full court this year, which is different. And it's it's a little difficult. I, you guys see me running back and forth. It it sound good, but I say that and then just on ball pressure. We're picking up a lot of times. We get comfortable and we get relaxed and take that step back. But now we're really getting up in the uh, other person's space and just trying to make them put on uh, put on the ground. And we got each other's help, but they do beat us. How often have you? I mean, I know it wouldn't naturally occur in drills, but like, how often is Jalen guarding you with the ball in the practice, and how annoying can he be when, he's, when you're talking about that on-ball pressure? <laughs> how's how's on-ball pressure? It, it's it's decent. It's decent. I ain't gonna lie. And me and him be going back out, back and forth. You know what I'm saying? All loves competition. We're trying to make each other better. So when he when he sees me with the ball, he definitely be picking up the intensity by ten, by eleven. Like I said, it just makes me better. So it's difficult. It's challenging, but I accept the challenge. You, uh, Donovan, who was in here flexing for us the other day, you look much bigger than <laughs> last year. How, how, you know, are you put on weight? Uh, actually, my weight stayed exactly the same. I fluctuate between like 200 to 205, so like, I would be in that 203 area. But Flores got us, I just got finished with weights, so I'm in there every day still doing the same routine, so nothing really different. I can feel the same. I, the weight's starting to adjust. It's time to calm down, so it's not too much pressure on my knees, so that's good. Like I said, it's just trying to get better, stronger every day. But your numbers have improved. Maybe the weight's the same, but your numbers in the gym have improved? <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. On a bench press, I don't even want to talk about how he could, he could bench press more than me. And I'll give it to him. He can. He for sure can. But he don't want to talk about that squat rack, though. That's why. I mean. That's why. I mean. He got me by 5, 10 pounds on the bench. I haven't seen it, but okay. You, you got that? I said, fam, put six plates on the squat rack. We're going all day. Yeah. Is that why his back hurt the other day? He's trying to keep up with you on the squad? Hey, it, it might be. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? I want to ask you one more question about the rivalry. I know we've asked a couple, mm -hmm. but um, you, you saw what the pit looked like with the other sold-out games that we had. But in terms of what the crowd is going to do, can 
in this game, the intensity on both sides of it. Yeah. Have you talked to the guys who played in it, like a match, like a house, and they've been through it both there and here? Uh, yeah, we definitely talked about it a little bit, and I've heard uh, what happened previous year before I got here, how there was some disrespect on the court and off the court. But like I said, we got we try not to get too caught up in those stuff because at the end of the day, what really matters is us performing well and us getting the win. So it's going to be love uh, from all of our fans and support and even from the crowds coming from New Mexico State. Like, even though it's negative, we take all fan reaction the same. So it's just going to be more noise. we got to focus on communicating, being able to hear each other on the bench, on the court, all that stuff. But besides that, we, we locked in for this game. We want it bad. We want it bad. What would you uh, – I'm curious how you would react to what your coach said. He said, as the kids say, the biggest flex is winning the game. Yeah. And that's, that's what Coach B said? Yeah. Then that's, then that's what hey, – if he said it, then I'm going to stick by it. <laughs> Can you hear it? Can you imagine him yeah. saying something like that? Yeah. I for sure care. I for sure care. Anything else for Q? Oh, yeah. One more. Um, Q, I know House was out for a lot of the beginning of the season. I know he brought energy when he mm -hmm. was on the bench, but what was it like having him out that last game, seeing the energy on the court? And what is bro, playing with House is so fun. I remember our first time we played together, like, he just started screaming. So I was like, I'm with it. So I started screaming. And now we were just feeding on each other's energy. Now it's like, okay, now I'm on the ball. Now I'm picking up energy just from house, just feeding. You know what I'm saying? So we're really sticking together. And especially when we add True and Donnie and just the whole team, that's when we really start uh, picking up on that defensive end and start getting steals and speeding the ball up. So I definitely feel the, his effect coming back on the court. Even a year into it, do you have any idea what he's doing on the court some of the times? I mean, he's bouncing it off players' backs. He's, he's hey, people that aren't looking for passes sometimes. How, house is one of none. He's one of none. So there, you're not going to find another boy like him, and, and that's what makes him special, and that's why he's so tough. So, hey, at this point, you just got to expect the unexpected when house on the court, and that's what I can say with him.